A great day to one and all. I am Kim J.C. Ensho, and today I will be discussing with you licensure examination for teachers preparation for mathematics majors set two. So I prepared 50 items here, and I hope that you are with this, you are with us. Prepare your pencils and papers and solve with me and check if you have the same answer as I did. I hope you're ready. Let's go. Let's have item number one. What constant should be added to x squared plus 8x to make it a perfect square trinomial? Is it 16, 8, 4, or 2? So give this problem a try, pause the video if necessary, and check if you have the same answer as I did. So for this question, what constant will make this a PST or a perfect square trinomial? And to do that, um, since anyway, the numerical coefficient of x squared is one, we can now simply divide. The technique is we have to divide the coefficient of this x by two. So eight divided by two is four. And after dividing it by two, then you square the result. Then you have four squared equals 16. Hence, the constant that should be added should be 16. And the correct answer, therefore, is letter A. I hope you got this correctly. Number two. Simplify x squared minus 4 all over x squared minus 4x plus 4 times the ratio of x squared plus 2x minus 8 and 2x plus 8. So which of A, B, C, or D do you think is correct? And for this case, it is important that we entail that we use factoring, that we have to factor polynomials whenever possible or as much as possible and divide like terms in the numerator and denominator if possible. So for x squared plus 4, this is a difference of two squares, which is factorable as x minus 2 times x plus 2. x squared minus 4x plus 4 is, in fact, a perfect square trinomial. It could be factored as x minus 2 times x minus 2 or x minus 2 quantity squared. The x squared plus 2x minus 8 could be factored as x plus 4 times x minus 2 Whereas for the denominator here, 2x plus 8, you could take out the GCF as 2. So we have here 2. Then 2x divided by 2 will be x here. Plus we have 8 divided by 2, which is 4. So now we are able to factor the expression completely. And now, remember, we could cancel factors or we could divide factors. And they will be out of the system if one is in the numerator and the other is in the denominator, okay? So we could divide this x minus two here. Also, I have here an, another x minus two, and I have here another x minus two. The x plus four and the x plus four here will also be divided into one. And what is left is x plus two all over one times the quantity times one half. And simplifying such, the product of the numerator is x plus 2, and the product of the denominator is 2. Hence, the correct answer here is letter A. Okay. Number three. Find the area of a rectangle with length and width of x plus 4 and 2x minus 5. Which of these is correct? Is it A? B, C, or D? We will see. So for this one, we know that area of a rectangle is length times width. And we have to multiply the x plus 4 and 2x minus 5 using the distributive property. And or simply you could utilize what they call the FOIL method. And doing such, x times 2x will be 2x squared x times negative 5 is negative 5x. 
4 times 2x, it's plus 8x. And 4 times negative 5 will be negative 20. And for such, the 2x squared and the negative 20 could be copied. The, um, whereas the negative 5x and the plus 8x could be simplified into plus 3x. Hence, the answer to this expression here is 2x squared plus 3x minus 20. And this is the area of the rectangle in square units. Letter D. Okay. Number four. How long is the diagonal of a square with side equals 5 cm? Is it 5 square root of 3, 5 square root of 2, 5 square root of 5, or 7 cm? Okay, let's reveal the solution now. For this one, we know that in a square, all four sides are equal. So these four sides are all equal. And that's why I have here 5 and 5. And, and aside from that, it is known that the angle, each of the four interior angles of a square is a right angle. That's why it, it's already known that this here is 90 degrees or a right angle. And since we have a right triangle, then the Pythagorean theorem is now applicable. That is, we have here the sum of the squares of the two legs. So that's 5 squared plus 5 squared is equal to the square of the hypotenuse, which is in this case x squared. Note that the hypotenuse of this triangle serves as the diagonal of the square. So we will now solve for x. So 5 squared plus 5 squared, that's 25 plus 25, or 50, is equal to x squared. And taking the positive square root of both sides, I just took the principal square root because anyway, we are dealing with the sides of a triangle and they, all, they are all positive. So I just took the principal square root. But 50 is not a perfect square, but it has perfect square factors, as perfect square factor of 25. So I will express 50 as 25 times two. The square root of 25 is five. And since two is no longer a perfect square or it's not a perfect square, then it has to stay inside your radical or it will be your radical, hence, the length of the diagonal of a square with 5 cm side length is 5 square root of 2 centimeters. Letter B. Number 5. What is the area of a circle whose circumference is 20 pi? Is it 50 pi, 90 pi, 100 pi, or 400 pi? Note that it is already a presumption here that all of these units. Uh, that all of them are in square units. So when we speak about circumference, the formula is 2 pi r. And in this case, the circumference is 20 pi. So we set the 2 pi r as your 20 pi. Dividing both sides by 2 pi with the aim of looking for the value of your radius, then r is equal to 10. And since the radius is 10 now, and the formula for the area of a circle is pi r squared, by substitution, you will have a is equal to pi times 10 squared. 10 squared is 100. And therefore, the area of the circle is 100 pi square units. Letter C. Number six. What is the surface area in cubic units of a cube with edge equals eight? <clears throat> is it 384, 394, 484, or 498? When we speak about uh, an edge, no? if, uh, for this case, if we take each face as a square, then it's like the side of your square. And we have to recall that the formula for the area of the of the surface area of a cube is 6s squared. How come? 
because one area, the area of a square is S squared, but since there are six faces, that's Y times six. By substitution now for the value of the S, which is your edge, by the way, it's six times eight squared. Eight squared is 64. And six times 64 is 384 cubic units. I hope you got this correctly. Letter A. All right. Number seven. What is the equation of a line with m equals three passing through negative one, four? Is it A, B, C, or D? What do you think? So you are given a slope and a point. Hence, you could utilize what we call point slope form, which is y minus y sub one equals m times the quantity x minus x sub one where m here is your slope, your x sub one is the abscissa of the point, and y sub one is the ordinate of your point. So by substitution now, you have y minus four is equal to three times the quantity x plus one. So your three goes here, four goes here, and your negative one, it becomes x minus negative one or x plus one. Using the distributive property, so 3 multiplied to x plus 1, so 3 times x will be 3x, three, 3 times 1 will be plus 3. Hence, you have y minus 4 equals 3x plus 3, and adding both sides by 4, we have the equation y equals 3x plus 7, letter C. Number eight, find the complement of the supplement in degrees of 100 degrees. Is it 80, 40, 30, or 10? So when we speak about complement, the two angles add up to 90 degrees. And if they are supplementary, um, then they should add up to 180. For this case, we will be taking the complement of the supplement of 100 degrees. We have to start from supplement of 100 degrees. So the supplement of 100 degrees is 180 minus 100 degrees because they remember they have to add up to 180. And so the other angle has to be 180 degrees minus 100 degrees, which is 80 degrees. And we will now take the complement of 80 degrees. And for that complement, then they should add up to 90. So to get the other angle, so we have 90 degrees minus 80 degrees, which is 10 degrees. Letter D is the correct answer. Number nine. What is the measure of each interior angle in degrees of an octagon? Is it 72, 128, 0.57, 135, or 140? I believe you are familiar with this concept that to determine the interior of angle of a regular polygon, you use the formula IA equals 180 degrees times the quantity N minus 2 all over N where IA represents the measure of an interior angle and N is the number of sides of that polygon. Since we have an octagon and an octagon has eight sides, so IA is equal to 180 degrees times eight minus two all over eight. So we have 180 degrees times six all over eight. The numerator simplifies to 1080 degrees all over eight, and that gives us 135 degrees. Letter C. Number 10. The two consecutive angles in degrees of a parallelogram are 2x minus 3 and 3x plus 18. 
solve for x. Is it 33, 34, 35, or 36? From here, ma'ams and sirs, we have to recall the fact that any two consecutive angles of a parallelogram are always supplementary. Hence, their sum has to be 180 degrees. That is why we have the equation 2x minus 3 plus 3x plus 18 equals 180. Combining like terms on the, on the left hand side, we have 5x plus 15 equals 180. Subtracting both sides by 15, you have 5x equals 165. And dividing both sides by 5, we have x equals 33, letter A. I hope that you got 10 out of 10 so far. <laughs>